Hey everybody, and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be talking about Logic Forge, which is a visual scripting tool for beginners. And you can see right here, I have everything installed that I need to, and this is just a default Unity scene. So the first step is to go into the scene and actually rename it to Logic Forge Light. So this is just going to be a simple tutorial about how to make a light turn on and off, basically, using this visual scripting tool. So first of all, make sure that your Logic Forge light scene is open. And then we can go back to Assets and select Create, and then go down to WinX Production. So this is where all the Logic Forge options are held for you. And we're going to create a new Logic Asset. So click on that and then click Save. So you can see we have a new asset right here. So we can also just rename this to light logic for now. And then make sure this is open. And the next step that we want to do is actually take this and drag it onto the directional light because this code is going to be associated with the directional light. So now when I go and click on directional light, when I am inside the logic editor, you can see that light logic comes up right here. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we want to make it so in our scene, when we're playing the game, if we right click, then we toggle this light on and off. So every single time we right click, the light comes on and then it comes off and so on. In order to make that happen, what we need to do is drag in our first node. So let's try taking this light right here. And this is one of the components of the directional light. So make sure you have clicked on directional light. We can drag this in right here. And then you can see this directional light node comes up. And there's a bunch of information right here. But the first, we want to add in a input node. So you can see right here, now I have an input node and I have directional light. So what we want to do is connect these two things up. And the first step to do that is to right click on the input and then add an input action. So there's a bunch of choices here you can see, but we're going to choose fire too. And that by default in unity is associated with the right mouse click button. So whenever I click like this, that's the fire two button. All right, I'll just add that. And we want to switch the action type from down to toggle because like I said, every time we click it, we want it to toggle back and forth and then just click okay. Then what we can do is we can drag this onto the directional light and it'll give us all of the different choices. So these are the things that we can affect with our input. So we're going to choose enabled because we just want the light to either be enabled or disabled every single step. <laughs> now the last step is going to be to press B enable on both of these so they will both be working correctly. All right. That looks awesome. So I'm just going to press Control S to make sure that everything is saved. And then I want to go back to the scene real quick. What we can do is click here and add a new 3D object. Because the light by default won't really change anything if we turn it on and off. We actually need something inside our scene. So you can see here that when I turn the light on and off, it is actually causing this cube to go dark and then to go bright again whenever the light is enabled and disabled. But of course, this isn't the actual game. The, ga the game is right here and it's not running. So I'm going to press Control S again to save. And then let's try playing this game and see what happens. OK, you can see that the cube is dark by default. Now, if I right click, you can see it lights up again and so on. I can keep on doing that. All right, perfect. So now let's actually see that happen. So I'm just dragging the game view over here so that when we press play, you can see both the game and the scene. So I can still look and see what's going on even when I have the game running. So when I have the game running, you see the lights disabled. But if I click, you see it's now enabled on both the scene view and the actual inspector window, which shows you all the information about the game object. And yeah, it still works just like before. Awesome. So 
you've made your first step in learning how to work with a visual scripting tool such as Logic Forge. Thank you for watching.